everybody to Mary Giuliani Live. I am so thrilled you are here today. Tonight we have a wonderful guest, Liz Vassy, who I'm sure you probably recognize her name. She is from the CSI series and we're very excited to have her and also we're going to be talking about her wonderful new project which is the Human Race, which is a documentary. Just for you guys that are uh, maybe new to the show, the whole point of the show here really is to support you in living your highest calling and being true to yourself and really experiencing the kind of transformation you want in your life. So if you are looking for a better quality of life, whether it's your career, your health, your relationships, whatever it might be, those are the kind of guests that I am interviewing every single week. If you want to know who the guests are that are going to be coming up on the show, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter. All you have to do is go to MaryGiuliani.net, which is right above me, and uh, there's a free newsletter button for you to just go ahead and subscribe there. Also, um, for those of you that are on Facebook Live, what really helps us is if you would share the live stream as it's live, then all of your friends can also be supported through Liz's message of really empowering uh, people to have great lives by moving their bodies and getting exercise. And, and um, she's got some great, great information about all of this. So um, also, I am on iTunes. So if you want to watch recordings of the show, just go to iTunes and look up Mary Giuliani Live. And um, also, I have a talk show archives, uh, so any get, uh, shows that you haven't been able to see the whole thing or any of it, go to our uh, the MaryGiuliani.net and go to talk show archives. And we also have audio-only versions, so if you want to take the show with you on your phone while you're jogging or, or talking or walking or, or whatever it might be, you can do that. So um, let's see. The other thing I always like to mention is that if you have any questions for me, I like to answer a guest question once uh, a week on, at the end of the show. So just email those to me at mary at marygiuliani.net. And um, what else? I think that's about it as far as announcements go. So with that, I'm very, very excited to have Liz Vassy. Liz is, like I said, she, her, she's most known for her five-year run on CSI, where she played Wendy Sims, a DNA uh, technician. She's also, uh, back, back in the day, did All My Children and, um, and was Emily Ann on All My Children. She's been a regular as well on ER and Two and a Half Men and, and The Tick. So. She's been in the entertainment business for 30 years and also is a very accomplished writer. So what she's doing now is a documentary on uh, called The Human Race, and I'm going to let her go into exactly what it's about. But uh, without any further ado, welcome, Liz. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Wow. So, you know, uh, interestingly enough, um, I, I used to watch all my children back in the day, and I probably saw you, but you were you Erica Kane's niece, or how were you related? <laughs> I'm just curious. No, well, I wasn't. I know everybody was related to one family or another. I wasn't related to Erica. I was, let me get this straight, I was Estelle's daughter with Billy Clyde, but I was yeah. adopted by Candy Early, who played Donna and Benny. <laughs> so my parents were my bio parents were a pimp and a prostitute and my step parents were a, a <laughs> prostitute woman. and um oh, yeah I, I was a very troubled character very troubled character <laughs> well i'm so glad that you know you have such an interesting past and and what you're doing presently too and then on csi that was another role that uh, i thought was really interesting as well and um and then you've been a writer for all these years, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know what I like to do before we get into what you're, I, I know that you're producing this brand new documentary. Actually, you know what, just why don't we get like a little bit of a, maybe a brief overview and, and let the, the folks know that you're also raising some money for it so that they can support you in, in any way they can. So go ahead. Sure. Uh, I am, uh, I'm doing a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo for a documentary that I'm making called The Human Race. And The Human yes. Race. Uh, about runners ages 50 to 90 and it started because I run every day of my life it's my meditation it's my happy place it's very calming to me and I wondered if there was ever an age when people give it up and I started looking up uh, research I started researching online and I found out mm -hmm. that people are running marathons in their 60s 70s 80s and 90s 
And the more I read about them, the more I wanted to meet them. And then I did, and I thought, these people are spectacular, and they're so inspirational. And I started talking to doctors and trainers and nutritionists about running and exercise in general and how good it is for you and how it is really the fountain of youth and how it's the single best thing that you can do for yourself. And right. I thought, I want to put all of this out there. And so I'm crowdfunding to make this documentary. And uh, it's been quite the experience so far. It's been fascinating. Well, great. I, I'm so excited to get into more about just the research and everything that's inspired you to even do this. Um, but before we do that, I just thought it would be fun to kind of get a feel for like what in like what on your path really brought you to the place of of wanting to get into this this type of of uh, project, and like I know that part of your path was unfortunately losing your mom as well, and but you were very very close, and if you wouldn't just mind sharing a brief overview of your your kind of how you got involved in the business and and then how you. Oh well, I started when I was uh, I started when I was a child. Um, I started acting when I was nine, and I'd been wow. in, uh, <laughs> I was a very shy kid growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I had gotten E. coli poisoning actually when I was a uh, two-year-old, so I was in the hospital. Oh my god! The time. And uh, when I came out of the hospital, I went from being a very outgoing kid to being very shy and very introverted. And I saw my sister in a play and thought it looked fun, and my mom was horrified because she thought, oh no, she's going to get up on stage and audition, and oh no, she's going to choke. But I didn't. Um, I felt at home, and I ended up getting the part of Oliver in Oliver, which was, uh, I think, probably a three-year period where all I did was play boys on stage. <laughs> and, oh my God, uh, that's it, funny. All boys. And it was... Um, it was so much fun, and it was it transformed me. It's all I ever wanted to do was to be a part of this business. And I did, I think, 50 theatrical productions between the ages of 50, I mean, between the ages of 9 and 15 um, at dinner theaters all over the Tampa Bay area, at uh, professional theaters, at community theaters. And my mom always said if it wasn't fun that I should quit. She wasn't a stage mom, but she was behind me all the way. And... I got out of soap when I was 16, all my children, and we moved to New York yeah. together. So my mom and I were incredibly, incredibly close. Um, yeah. And uh, like you said, it, uh, I was athletic anyway, but I, I lost my mom in 2012, and mm -hmm. it was horrible, as you can imagine. And uh, one of the only things that kept me going was being able to get up and go running and to have that consistency yeah. in my life take care of myself, right. know that I was doing something to take care of myself. So uh, it, it became a daily activity. It became something that I needed and, and as good for my head as my heart and, and my body. So, um, so I really wanted to see how long I could do it and I found out I never have to give it up. Wow, that's, that's so cool. I mean, that you had such a close relationship with your mom and of course that's why it's so hard to, you know, have that loss and, and yet you've taken this love of running and really made it like a cause for, for the, for the good of people that are, you know, getting in their late forties, early fifties, or even up until their nineties. And I was, when I was researching your story, it was interesting to find out that you um, were doing research on how running impacted people as they got older, maybe your, your joints and that sort of thing. And that's how you found all these people in their 50s through 90s that were running, isn't that right? Or it, It's true, yeah. I talked to a doctor at Stanford named Dr. Freeze, which I think is a wonderful mm -hmm. name, Dr. Freeze. And he did a very famous experiment in the running world. He uh, did a 15-year longitudinal study, 500 runners, 500 non-runners. So over 15 mm -hmm. years, he studied these groups. And he found mm -hmm. out that the runners, and again, it can be any athletic uh, activity that you want to do, but it was running in this case, that the runners were half as likely to die early of any cause. Uh, their knees were wow. stronger, their ligaments were stronger, uh, their joints were stronger. Um, they were less likely to get sick in any way. It was good for them neurologically. Basically, he was shocked because it was so much better on so many different levels than he ever anticipated. And he now says, Dr. Freeze now says, that physical activity is the single best thing that you can do. And the thing I really want to drive home, because I'm meeting some people in this documentary who are all over the age of 50, but some are doing 5Ks, some are doing 10Ks, some are doing half marathons. You don't have to run a marathon. I've never run a marathon. 
Um, right. What I do think, though, is if you see an 85-year-old running a marathon, maybe you can take the stairs instead of taking the escalator if you're capable. Yes. It's whatever you're capable of doing. Uh, it's just to be more active on your own scale. It's it's certainly right. not, I am not telling anybody to go run 100 miles. Absolutely. Just be active if you can. Well, yeah. and like, you know, I, I've had skiing injuries where I have the kind of knees that won't support running because I don't have the meniscus and stuff, but I do walk every day and, you know, and I track that and, and, and that's made a huge difference for me. So I, I think the, what I, thanks for, you know, clarifying that, that it, it's not, you know, yes, you're sharing stories of runners that are between the ages of 50 and 90, but really the bigger message is that it's okay, or not not just okay, but optimal for for everybody to be really active as long as they can possibly be active for if they if they want a quality of life. It, well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, Dr. Fries, he talks about stretching middle age out until the end of your life because the way that he puts it, <laughs> he says basically, he says if you're going to live 100 years, you have a choice. Uh, you can have 60 absolutely great years and 40 kind of okay ones, or if you take care of yourself, you can have 98, 99 fantastic years and maybe one, maybe six months. Or, I mean, he said it's just a matter yeah. of having more, putting more life in your years, you know, and I, I really love that. And on a different level, but it, it also has something to do with my mom and my grandmother. I, my family, um, I grew up with a lot of older people around me all the time. My grandmother lived to be 94 mm -hmm. years old, and she was one of the best people mm -hmm. on the planet as far as I'm concerned. And I live in Los Angeles where people tend to have an expiration date. And I, uh, I can't stand that. I mean, they do. And it's our country in general doesn't oh, doesn't yeah, revere absolutely. people the way that they should. And I yeah. figure when you want to change things in this world, it's better if you try to do it all by yourself. <laughs> so this is partially me trying to show people in the over 50 demographic in a light that I believe they deserve to be seen in. They are fierce. They are wonderful. They're funny. They're full of life. As one of them says, all of my friends are getting busy living, not getting busy dying. He's 82 years old, and he's talking about how they're all getting busy living, and I love it. Well, and, you know, and I thought I knew a lot, and, you know, I totally agree with you, and I thought I knew a lot about just, like, the mind-body connection. In other words, I remember Wayne Dyer used to say, don't let an old person move in, you know, to your mind, because it's mm -hmm. like, if, if, if we don't watch ourselves, we, we can start assuming that we're going to, not be able to be as active or you know and you just make these, these sort of assumptions based on on the culture and then you you know then you it's a self-fulfilling pro prophecy and so um when you shared that you were talking with runners that were in their 80s and 90s that were doing what 5ks or something i was like oh my god oh, okay. that was we met one uh, 82 year old who it helped him through the death of his wife and he would get up and run with his running club Every single, actually, if you watch the trailer, to go to Indiegogo and watch the trailer yeah. for the human race. What, what, so what, how, how do they get to the Indiegogo, just so I know? Um, you could either go to Indiegogo, just type that in, in any search engine that you want, go to Indiegogo, mm -hmm. and then it has a search bar, and type in the human race. Um, that's okay. one way. Or you can follow me on Twitter, and I'm at Liz Vassy, and I tweet about it nonstop. So either way, you can okay, get good. to it. Uh, oh, but there's really a, a quick, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I just I just wanted to make sure that the the visitor the viewers knew that they can ask you questions um, on any topic regarding you know what we're talking about tonight. So if they if you any of you at home want to ask Liz or me questions, um, just there's a chat box right below the live stream box on my website, Mary Giuliani Watch Live. So uh, anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure people knew that. So go ahead. Sorry. Oh, just, uh, no, there's a, an 82-year-old in the trailer, and he's just wonderful because he gets so excited. And uh, this quote, and I can't, I put it in every trailer we've cut for this thing. He just looks at the camera and he goes, you want to see my shoes? And he's just ah! excited to show <laughs> his shoes and his medals. And, uh, and, he, and he says that running is one of the reasons that he wants to wake up in the morning. And it's just, it's lovely because it's a sense of community for a lot of these people, too. Oh, my God. No kidding. Um... So as far as, you know, the other thing that you had mentioned uh, when we talked before this interview was just that you wanted to give people a sense of hope because, you know, with everything that's gone on with the election for people that didn't get the results that they wanted, that this would really be a way to, you know, bring more hope to people. 
think uh, I think our country could use a lot more hope. I do. I also think when I tried to sell this originally, I took it to some production companies here in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and I've I've worked in this business for three decades, and a lot of the production companies that I took it to, they said, okay, but you know what we can do? We can turn it into a weight loss race. So we can take all of these people and we can have them see who loses weight the, the, the quickest. Or we can, we can get them to fight about who's going to win the race. And I oh didn't want to do that. And this is in line with, with hope. Because I think that in this industry, uh, a lot of times it's completely underestimated how much people want hope and how much they want to feel uh, fulfilled and uplifted. I mean, uh, I just saw Hidden Figures, finally. And no wonder it's making the money then, because it's uplifting and it's happy and it gives you confidence and it makes you, I mean, it, it's just, it's joy watching these women overcome. Right. So I don't want to do a documentary where these wonderful people who are dealing with a death of a spouse or one man ran through cancer treatment, I don't want them to fight about who's losing more weight. That's ridiculous. I want to make it my way and I want it to be about hope and I want it to be respectful and I want it to be optimistic because... Uh, I think that's one thing that uh, no matter what side you're on in this, this uh, <laughs> great big occurrence that happened last November, um, you know, it, it would be nice to agree on something. And I think everybody can agree that uh, hope is good. <laughs> hope is good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the other thing that uh, I just want to make sure I... I want to make sure we cover the topics that, that are really important about this documentary. Um, well, well, you know what? Actually, I wanted to mention, so the, what you just shared about how the, the people that were wanting to fund you wanted it to be these sort of reality, you know, contentious sort of energies and, you know, and just promoting ageism and everything and weight loss. And, and so... And so the whole thing, what I'm hearing is that you're staying true to your principles and, and the whole purpose of what you're doing here. And, um, and you know, taking the high road, and it's almost as if, um, I guess what I want to say is, is, is these reality shows that sort of glorify fighting and bickering and, and just negative energy, it's like, there's a certain audience for that, and you know, and it's a it's a lower level energy, and it's not it's not really something that's going to help people for long term. They might get a kick out of it or feel like they're better than the people that they're watching or whatever, but it really isn't going to help anybody's life in the long run. And that's what I love about what you're doing, is you're really helping people extend their life, you know, 10, 20, 30 years possibly. And so I really commend you for that. Um, yeah. Thank so thank Thanks. you. Um, the other thing that you mentioned in um, in the you know the the research that I did was uh, the health care costs. I mean, could you go into, into a little bit about that and just the, just the how many I, I think you've got here that 40.3 million Americans are 65 or older right now, and you know unless there's a shift in really focusing on moving their bodies, there's going to be some major health care costs. Absolutely. I mean, it's just simple math. And uh, the, I think it's the fastest growing demographic. Well, I know the over 50 demographic, but I think specifically over 65 is the fastest growing demographic. And um, I was reading in the Harvard Business Review about how if we take care of ourselves and if that demographic takes care of themselves, that, uh, again, it's just simple math. The, the cost of health care will go down. I mean, there is a fiscal reason that I want to make this too. I think, uh, I think that's, that's, that's important for people to know. Um, there's a fiscal reason, there's a moral reason. I, I want people to know that, uh, that, as I said, people over 50 can accomplish really wonderful things. There, there are health concerns. I want people to be able to stretch middle age until the end of their life. So, um, you know, there's, there's sort of a trifecta of reasons why I'm making this, but certainly health care costs and the sort of uh, <laughs> precipitously rising uh, health care costs is one of them because I think um, you know, obviously taking care of yourself and running and doing physical activity uh, can cut down on a host of different diseases. Dr. Friesen's um, study certainly showed that, and uh, I think that's important information to have. It can also, it can save your life, it can save your wallet. <laughs> so, Absolutely. I mean, um, and just to, for me, even uh, just the emotional component, you know, the, the feeling of well-being. So, you know, not only will you, am I protecting myself from future illnesses, but from an emotional standpoint, it, it makes me just feel good in my body, which makes me have more creativity and experience better relationships and everything. So it's, 
it's it's really it impacts every area of your life. So it does, and it's it's interesting too because um, I write more than than I act right now uh, in the last couple of years, and I get a lot of my ideas while I'm running. I'll just go out for a run, and especially if I hit a bump in a story or if I get notes back from the network to change something. These notes can <laughs> sometimes are really hard to to discern what it is that they want and figure out a way to do it with the vision that you have. And sometimes I go out for a run, and it just all of a sudden comes to me. Um, I, it's something about the, the breathing. It's, it's the sound of my own footsteps. It's just I, I don't know what it is, but it's a little bit of magic, and um, it tends to help me almost every time. So, yeah, you're right. absolutely. So, um, would you mind sharing a few, you know, a few of the stories of the people in that are going to be in the documentary, as far as just how it's helped them, as far as running after fifty? Uh, sure. Um, the woman that's helping me a lot, one of my producers, her name is Debbie, and she is uh, sort of uh, she, she's a, a pretty big deal at Run Tampa. Uh, I met a lot of these runners in Tampa. And mm -hmm. I don't know exactly which ones I'm going to use for the finished documentary. Some of the ones that we mm -hmm. met will certainly be in it. But also, once I started crowdfunding and putting it out there that I wanted to meet people, I was shocked because so many emails started coming in to me with, uh, there's a, a wonderful guy in Australia who said, would you consider flying here? I want to do a 100-mile race. And I believe oh he's God. 58. And he said, you know, if you can come and follow me. And, and somebody in the Midwest wrote me and said, please come follow me. Uh, somebody else wrote me and said, I'm going to be doing two races. If you follow me in the second one, like people want to be seen. They want, they want people to know that they're capable of doing this. Um, some of the people that I met, though, uh, like I said, I mean, uh, the, one, the one man that really touched me was uh, the one that ran through the death of his wife. It helped him grieve mm -hmm. his wife. He was, you know, he was in his 80s. He'd been married a very long time. And he said yeah. it, it's one of the reasons he was still alive. Uh, and he meant that mentally. And he meant, you know, he meant Absolutely. It, it was a reason for him to get up in the morning. Um, I met a wonderful runner named Joe who was uh, just terrific. He runs a 10K. He's in his 70s. He runs a 10K every day in his 70s. Oh my God. So 6.2-ish uh, miles every single day. Um, and he's the one that said, I am getting busy living, not getting busy dying. He's done the Boston Marathon, I think, 40 times. Um, some oh of his times God. have been record setting. I mean, it's unreal what these people have accomplished. And mostly what I noticed is that, A, they, they all looked a lot younger than they are. I mean, to a shocking mm -hmm. degree, because they've taken really good care yeah. of themselves. But mostly they acted younger. I mean, it's, yes. it's a fascinating thing to see them kidding around with each other and joking and yeah. racing each other during their runs, you know, and like the group that went running at 7 in the morning on Saturday, they would just race each other and jumping up and down. And one guy, my favorite, he has a watch that tells him what he can eat for how far he's run. So he finished his run and he was like, five bananas. I can have five <laughs> bananas. And, and they just they were all so uh, unique and, and wonderful, but joy was the biggest common denominator. There was a lot of joy with the people that I've met so far. I love that. Well, you, you know, the other thing I wanted to uh, have you talk to our viewers about is debunking the myth of running in terms of hurting your joints or knees. Yeah, uh, well, again, Dr. Fries's, uh his study showed, and he was shocked about this as well. He thought that there would be a deterioration that would happen with these people, but he mm -hmm. watched them for 15 years. And there's something about the way your body absorbs calcium. The, 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 the pounding of your bones, weight-bearing exercise, is actually good for you in a couple different ways. It helps your body um, with, with, with calcium, like I said, and it also um, it strengthens... It actually strengthens your knees to put them to work like that. Now, he does say, and this is very true, you have to take care of yourself. You have to um, wear the right shoes. You have to run on a good surface, whether it's a treadmill or a trail. Don't go running on uh, cement. Um, change, you okay. know, wear runner socks. Uh, listen to your body. That's a big thing he said to me because I run uh, pretty much every day. And I said, do I need to cross train? Should I be doing something else? He said, do you hurt? I said, no, I don't hurt. And he said, if you do, be honest with yourself and stop. And that's a big thing with him is listen to your own body and don't push. And, and obviously talk to a doctor before you start anything and make sure that it's the right exercise for you. And if you've had, uh, my husband used to play football and he, running is not his exercise and he knows that. So he rides the mm -hmm. bike. Um, he's still going to be the, the director of photography in this because, well, A, he loves me. <laughs> he he kind of takes yes. me. We've been married for 12 years. But also, um, he just, uh, he believes in the message. So even though he's not a runner himself, he believes in the message. And he's smart enough to know that his knees 
aren't uh, they're they're not friends of running. His knees are not friends with running. They're friends yes. with bicycling. So you know, know yourself. Right. Well, very good. Um, do you have any recommendations of for people that maybe have just just sort of given up on exercise and have been really sedentary for years and years and you know how they could start? I think that walking is perfect. I think, um, <clears throat> look, I have a sister who, uh, <laughs> she would rather do anything than exercise. Anything. We're entirely opposite when it comes to this. And she has just started taking walks around the block. And she will take mm -hmm. the stairs instead of the elevator. Um, little things make a big difference. The other thing I learned in my research, if this is not exercising at all, exercising even a little bit takes you up here and what I do what these runners do it only takes you up about that much further so the big difference is between nothing and something and it's right. huge so just getting activity my sister you know she'll call me and she'll go I, I only walked for 20 minutes today and I'll say first of all I'm not like the exercise pope you don't have, you don't have to you don't have to call me this like you're you know it's yeah. funny she wants confession my <laughs> yes, exactly it's okay um, but it, the other thing is that it, Great. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes. I mean, that's one of the biggest points right. of this documentary. It does not have to be a marathon. It just, if, if you're capable, it should just be something. I have a, a, a friend with arthritis, and she swims. Uh, swimming is all she can do. It's the only thing that feels good um, because mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty serious situation that she has. But swimming feels fantastic, and she tries to swim as much as she can, and it's made her feel better, and it's also made her lose weight, which in turn is better for her joints. So. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you for that because, um, you know, I know for me when I was, when I used to have a walking buddy, it was so easy because you had accountability, right? You know, you had somebody that you had to show up for each time you did your walk every day or whatever it was. And then when, when that person moved away, it was like, okay, what am I going to do now? And what I decided, and this is what's really helped me, is I love listening to personal growth, uh, like audio stuff. And so... I found all these free podcasts of, of great content and just listened and, and got all of this great, you know, inspirational knowledge that would really help me move forward in my life. And so it's like my time for, for my, own, my own personal growth. I use it for that. The other thing that I, um, I use for the time that I'm walking every day is I love to call friends. That's when I do my, my phone calls, too. And so, yeah. you know, a lot of people feel like, oh, I don't have the time or whatever. It's like, and, and you don't even notice, for people that don't like the feeling of exercise, you don't even notice you're doing it when you're doing something else at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Multitask. But that's, that's yeah. the other thing. A lot of people say they don't have time, but then, and sure, some people don't. But a lot of people that say that, I've found, I'll say, so how often are you on Facebook? How often are you doing this? Yeah. How often are you doing this? It's about choices. It's about time management, and it's about right. uh, making choices and what, with what you want to do at that time. So as long as you're honest about it, if you say, look, I would rather be on Facebook for those 15 minutes, just know that you're making a choice. You, you could be doing right. something else. You, you do have the time if you want to go for a walk. And also, you know, take your cell phone. Do Facebook while you're walking. Do it on the treadmill. Uh, there's an agency out here that has treadmill desks, which I find hysterical. Yes. They have treadmills yes. attached to their desk. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's better than sitting all day. So, um, it, again, it's whatever whatever feels right, whatever fits into your schedule. Uh, but I think, I suspect most people have time to do something. Well, absolutely. And, and like you said, it's a choice. And, um, you know, with, with the whole shift in digital, like, this, you know, screen time, you know, so many things that we do these days, it's, we're either in front of a computer, in front of our phone, in front of a tablet. And um, so we're sitting a lot of the time. And I, I'm sure you've probably heard about just the fact that when we are not moving, when we're just sitting all day, it's like almost as bad as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. You know, it's like, so it's really important that, uh, you know, we really make it a priority and, and, you know, find a way to do it that is fun. Like for me, I'm not a gym person. Some people, you know, get a gym membership, and I've done that, and I just never would do it. I have to be outside, or I actually go to the mall and walk if it's, like, yeah. super hot or super cold. So there's yeah. ways around it, and um, and you will feel so much better throughout your whole day. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, for me, it's uh, it's in the morning. I go running in the morning, and I just don't feel right if I haven't. Uh, my yeah. husband laughs because he can tell the difference. I mean, it's it's... Yeah. Uh, it's I call, well, I also like coffee, but it's it's another kind of coffee for me. I need it in the morning to feel centered. Yeah, absolutely. 
So um, as far as the, the documentary goes, um, what's the, like, it, well, part of what I read about it is that, you, you know, you're, the style of it is going to be really active. You're going to have GoPro cameras and all kinds of fun things. And could you share a little bit about just how you plan it? Because you're the director and the producer. I am. I'm the director and producer, and my husband is the director of photography. And my husband has basically done every single movie in Hollywood, not really, but almost every single movie in Hollywood with uh, robots and uh, dragons and dinosaurs. And, I mean, he shoots a lot of action movies. And uh -huh. we talked about this because the people that I met are so active and so wonderful and so vivacious. Uh -huh. And so uh, we want to shoot it and make it as active of a movie as, as we can to keep up with them. And one thing we're thinking is, We'll use GoPros or GoPro light cameras and give them to each of our runners so they can track their own uh, progress. Um, we're going to follow them when they're running and training, but at times we I mean, can't be with all five of them all the time. So they're also going to track their own progress and they're going to let us know if they had mm -hmm. a good day and, and how it's going. We'll be on the runs with them. So it'll be sort of, you know, it'll be an immersive experience. Um, and we definitely want to make it uh, exciting and fast and, and furious and, um, like I said, awesome. as energetic as it is. Yeah. And have you chosen, um, I know that you, you haven't like locked in on exactly which five people there are. Are there, is it possible for other people that want to be considered to still sort of apply to be in the movie or? Sure. And it's not, you know, I mean, it's not like an audition or like Survivor or anything. We're, we're going to, we're probably, <laughs> we're, um, we want one person, each person is running the biggest race of his or her life. So it's one person who hasn't conquered a 5K yet. We're going to watch him or her do the first 5K, oh, okay. first, first half marathon, first marathon, first ultra. Okay. So those are, the, those are the five types of runners that we're looking for. Now, during that time, we're going to meet their running group. So we're also going to meet people that they run with. We're going to meet their relatives. Oh, nice. We're going to meet their doctors. So we'll meet all the people that are around each runner, and we'll also have people coming in just talking about why running is good for them. I mean, we're not necessarily following them as runners, but yes. we're just going to get yes. uh, people's opinions and what it's done for them, and probably some over 50 celebrities who run and swear by it. I know some um, that that yeah. want to talk about it and what it means to them too. So um, we're gonna, you know, it's going to be a, a vast array of people, but but the main gist of it is going to be these five runners training for the biggest the biggest run that they've done. And it's important to me, again, just to show uh, one person doing a 5K because, well, that's no small feat, but also it's not an ultra marathon of 100 miles. You know, I want to show right. that all of it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. All of it is, is incredible. Right. Well, I love it. I mean, um, I'm just curious when you said GoPro light, so I know the GoPros, but what's a GoPro light? What's different? What's different about it? Oh, sorry. Cars? GoPro light. Uh, L-I-K-E. Like, like uh, we might not use GoPro in oh, particular, okay. But we'll, okay, got it. Yeah. Got it. I Something got it. GoPro okay. S. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Um, okay, what else was going to ask you? Oh, um, there's already several uh, organizations and companies that are supporting you. And would you mind sharing a little bit about who has been supporting you so far as getting as far as getting this produced? Um, sure. We are definitely going to have the St. Pete Film Commission on board. Um, they're definitely yeah. uh, going to sponsor us. Um, like I said, we're doing crowd sponsoring, and, and three people have already signed up to be associate producers. There's a price that goes with that. Um, and then two other very large organizations are considering us right now, but I can't talk about either one of them because we haven't signed on the dotted line. Sure. Um, but one is sports-oriented, and one is demographic-oriented. Um, right. So uh, we're excited about both, and we're waiting to hear uh, exactly to what degree they're going to be involved. Well, and you know, when we spoke earlier, you had mentioned that, and you've mentioned on the show too, that, that some of the potential sponsors were hesitant because they felt that the demographic didn't warrant their, you know, their promotional dollars or whatever. And yet, what I was sharing with you, and you already know this, is that you know, people that are like baby boomers are like, they have the, the most discretionary income and have the most net worth than anyone else does. It's like, why wouldn't, you know, if people are in it for a profit or a return on investment, it just blows my mind that there wouldn't be more people sort of lining up to support this project. Yeah, it makes no sense. I mean, it goes back again to uh, some sort of fictitious uh, expiration date that I think, um, I think, yeah. I mean, it's getting a little bit better in movies and in TV, but it's something that I'm really cognizant of. And I, look, I mean, there's also, 
you go to a movie, and even now, in this day and age, you'll see a 60-year-old man with a 30-year-old woman playing his wife. We're, we're very weird about age in this country. So it doesn't yeah. surprise me that certain companies, certain shoe companies, certain a lot of companies are just saying, right. no, it's not the demographic that, that I want to support. And that's another reason why I'm crowdfunding, and it's another reason why I'm going to uh, different organizations that are maybe a little bit outside of... Because at first I thought, oh, well, you know, I'll just get a shoe company to sponsor this in a second. It's harder than I thought uh, because yeah. of the demographic that I'm, I'm, I'm shooting. So um, I've had to sort of think around that. But I'm happy to say the crowdfunding is going fantastically well. The good thing is the more money that we make, we know exactly mm -hmm. how we're going to use it. If we make... If we surpass our goal, this means that we can go to further places. There's a runner in Australia, like I said, that wants us to follow him. Yeah. We can take this out of the country if we make enough. Absolutely. So suddenly it becomes a bigger documentary and we can follow maybe even more runners. So um, it's sort of built up on different tiers what we can accomplish. Because if, if we didn't Absolutely. make our goal, we were like, okay, we'll just go to St. Pete and we'll only shoot runners in St. Pete, Florida. Well, it appears that's we right. can do more than that. So that's good. And now our next step is hopefully to be able to uh, possibly get out of the country and um, meet some runners in some pretty fantastic places. Awesome. So, yeah. you know, you've been in Hollywood for 30 years now, right? Um, what, yeah. what have you experienced as far as ageism personally? I mean, I, I have to imagine that you have experienced something. Um, I have. It's not so much that, I mean, in the first place, I, I at the age of 40, I decided I wanted to start writing um, mm -hmm. more than acting. Uh, I wrote an episode of CSI, and I fell in love with the whole process. I uh, just, nice. I loved every bit of it. And then I ended up selling a script, then I sold another script, then I got a deal to write another script. So I've sold four pilots in a movie, a TV movie. Wow. Um, and it, it feels good. And, and the reason for me, I mean, again, starting when I was nine, it just feels good to do something different. But also, uh, I'm not a big fan of what a lot of people have to do to stay young looking. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not doing that. Um, so, I, so there's that. But uh, I guess the main form of ageism that I've felt, um, I'm a feminist. I believe in equality. I, I staunchly believe in equality. And some of the roles that I'm reading now, um, you know, it's like, come on, play the sitcom wife. And, you know, in one of them specifically, it was all about how the mom was going to go back to work and the husband was going to stay home with the kids. And I thought, well, this is the best sitcom of 1987. Like, really? And so <laughs> the roles changed. It's not so much for me that it wasn't that there weren't roles anymore. It was that a lot of them were changing, and it wasn't really anything that I was interested in, in playing at this point in my life. Um, so... I will certainly go back to acting when something, I'll probably write something for myself, honestly. Uh, I still love yeah, acting. Know. It's just uh, I was noticing that I wasn't as excited about roles as I used to be. Um, so so, so. What, what about the role? I'm, I'm not, what, I mean, it sounds like it, it didn't align with who you saw yourself as being at the age that you are, but what about, I'm just curious more specifically, what about the role did you find distasteful? Oh, you know, it's fine. It's, it's, it's fine for what it is. It's just not my cup of tea. For me personally, uh, it was all about setting it up for the guy to be funny and, uh, and the wife to be sort of there. Um, right. I, I just not don't. Not really having a voice that. or not really, yeah, like not being, right. yeah, yeah, equal. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, yeah, exactly. So, so that's what it was for me more than anything. I mean, it wasn't anything sort of insulting. I, you know, right. again, I'm a feminist, so we don't get to see the female characters stand up to the men. To me, personally, it's insulting, but it's nothing completely egregious. Right. It wasn't like I read it and went, oh, it was right. horrible. Right. It wasn't, it's not what I believe. Um, you know, there's there's sort of a school of thought in sitcoms that you take the sort of funny husband and you, you give him the cute little wife, and he does funny things that 12-year-olds do, and the wife laughs at him, and it's like, that. that's not funny to me. It's just not funny. Yeah. It's not my marriage, either. It's not... Yeah, it, it's not yeah. what I've experienced. You know, Mad About You it was a great sitcom about a married couple. Now that was fantastic. That was that right. type of stuff that I like. Okay, cool. Um, so as far as um, I was going to ask you, like other, just other, I know what I wanted to ask you. What would you say has been the biggest obstacle for you to to overcome in in your life as far as just 
related to this topic or or not just so people can kind of get a feel for you what would you you know what is something that you've really struggled with but overcome and, and feel really proud of yourself for doing it um hmm. wow <laughs> where to start um you know my uh, i believe I believe that if you put yourself out there, I believe fortune favors the bold. And if you believe in yourself and you take chances, um, and you you do put yourself out there, that good things will come. Um, my parents went through a very uh, messy divorce when I was mm -hmm. 16, and oh. I ended up getting out all my children and living in New York with my mom. Uh, that was a big thing to get over. Um, and certainly, well, moving to New York helped. I love New York with all my heart, and being with my mom helped. Um, but that was big. Um, I yeah. getting married was big for me. I never thought I'd get married. I never really. Mm. I was never the type of woman that no, I never wanted to get married. Um, I thought, well, maybe I'll uh, I'll just be alone. I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt a bunch of kids. I'm gonna have this sort of gaggle of, yeah. of children and well, and. Um, and then I met David, and it was immediately apparent to me. I mean, we were engaged within three months and married three months after that. He just, well, I won the spousal lottery. I found the very best one. Like, I still have a mad crush oh. on him. It's called later. So, um, oh, that's so that nice. uh, is pretty great. So that was a big thing, just even getting married. Um, the most challenging thing, hands down, though, I mean, without a doubt, is it was the loss of my mom. It was uh, yeah. surprising. It was... Uh, a long experience and it seemingly came out of nowhere it was uh, it was life changing um, mm -hmm. and I uh, you do come out of it a different person and and what I didn't know is that and a lot of people don't talk about it. it's another thing about this country nobody talks about grief and it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting road and people don't warn you that grief doesn't have the decency to be linear like, you know, you think that you're doing better a year later and then suddenly you see something or smell something or hear something and mm -hmm. it's just, my, my, mm -hmm. uh, my sister and I have a phrase that I won't share because it's personal, but there's a phrase that we have with each other and if we text it to mm -hmm. each other then we know it's bad mm -hmm. and we have to call each other and, um, and look out for mm -hmm. each other. So uh, that was, mm -hmm. was absolutely the, the biggest life change. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And running is like you shared is is what really helped you through it. So you know it's a yeah. And it sounds like your sister and and, and my husband a, a safe place and your husband yeah to to really yeah. process that. And I I agree with you. Our country and I don't know about other countries, but this country it feels like doesn't really hold the space for a lot of negative emotions. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, before we uh, sign off with you, Liz, let's talk about how people can support you. Okay, where can people go? Uh, they, yeah. can, um, they can go to Indiegogo if they have any amount of money helps a lot, a uh, dollar, five dollars, mm -hmm. everything adds up. Um, if, I understand it's very difficult times, if, uh, if nobody can part with money, just getting that link and tweeting it out and putting it on Facebook, telling runners, um, right. telling people that might be interested about it, just getting the word out about it. Because I've found that um, the hardest thing about crowdfunding has been getting things to the right eyes. Um, right. My, uh, like I have all these really fun perks. You know, you can buy things on Indiegogo. Like right. if you donate a blank amount of money, you get this thing. And a friend of mine is a fantastic artist, and those things sat there for so long. And finally, the right people, the fans of his, got to that yeah. page and the people that wanted yes. it. And then they sold out in a day. So it's about getting the right eyes to the right page and to the right to the right. So it, that just is a matter of getting it everywhere. And what isn't there some stuff that you're donating, like your personal signed things, or on the Indiegogo? Oh platform? yeah, I, I, I want to be sure about that for a moment. I'm I'm sharing. Uh, let's see, I had ten CSI scripts that were signed by the whole cast, which was oh, fun. Cool. Those went. Oh, they're um, already gone. I have, What's left? Those are gone. Uh, let's see. I have pictures of Nathan Fillion, who plays Castle. He was nice enough to donate a lot of pictures. I have friends on um, Once Upon a Time who donated pictures. Friends from Supernatural Great. who donated pictures. 
It was the craziest thing about Twitter. I did Two and a Half Men for a while, and last night I was tweeting about Two and a Half Men scripts that I signed. John Cryer found me on Twitter, and in public, he just said, I'll sign him. Will it help? Uh, and I was like, yeah, it'll help a little, John. Yeah, I think it'll help. So uh, <laughs> John Cryer is not signing the scripts, and those a bunch of them went out the window immediately. So, yeah, it's, um, it's been great. I've, just, uh, I've had a lot of good friends who are helping out a lot. Awesome. So for any of you that are watching, you know, go to the Indiegogo site, type in the human race, right? Yes. And those all, based on whatever you donate, you can get some really cool things that are um, from Liz or related to Liz, and um, it'll be great. So, and, um, and you know, the other, yes, thank you for that. I was, I was going to mention that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, if you want a nice tax write-off, and also, I, you know what came to my mind as we were talking, you could actually, well, you really are supporting people in saving their lives. I mean, literally extending their lives, if you think about it. I mean, if enough pe I mean, even if one person lives an extra year, two years, five, two, I mean, if you think about it, look how many people's lives are going to get extended by this work that you're doing, so... Well, you know, thank you. I, at first, I would have, I would have uh, probably laughed about that and thought, well, I hope I make that kind of impression. But I got to tell you, even this trailer, my cousin called me out of nowhere and said, I'm now running a 10K. I just ran a 10K. Oh I'm running a 5K tomorrow. And he hasn't been doing anything. And another friend of mine ran a half marathon, and it was the first one that she had. So the fact that I've already been able to get to people and give them this message, and a lot of it, again, is just – if you see somebody years and years older than you are, if you yes. see somebody 10 years older than you are doing something this spectacular, it, it inspires you and mostly totally. how happy they look. You know, it's, it's a legal drug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah. I mean, that's how I, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is I got inspired by other people that were willing to be bold and, and, and go for it in their lives. And, and so, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm already inspired by what you're doing because I had no idea that people could be running into their, up until their 90s or even longer. So um, thank you so much for, for you know, what, what you're doing. And the last thing I always like to ask my guests are, you know, what is the, the, the message that you're most passionate about you want to share with our viewers? Uh, I would say, hands down, it's that it's never too late to start. And I don't just mean exercise. It's never too late to start anything. Um, mm -hmm. It's. Uh, I think it's an important message to put out there. I mean, we're, we're living longer than ever. And uh, I believe in people having, people having a second act, people having a third act. Um, mm -hmm. It's something I'm really passionate about. Like, I, I mean, look, I, I was an actress for 30 years, and now I've started writing. And mm -hmm. it's a change in my life. Same industry. But it's a change, and, um, yeah. and it feels good. I think the other way to keep yourself young is to, to take up new activities, to, to change, to grow, to, uh, to you know, evolve. So, awesome. yeah. Well, Liz Vassy, thank you so much. And please, all of you that are out there, you know, support Liz's uh, project of the human race. Go to the Indiegogo site, look it up, and you'll be amazed at uh, how you can support people living longer and having greater lives. So thank you so much, Liz, and all the best thank to you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. All right. Wow. Thank you so much, Liz. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. Um, I have a few more announcements and my coaching tip and letting you know who's going to be on next week. Um, let's see. I, um, I wanted to uh, mention that uh, for any of you that have just tuned in, if you want to make sure you know who's coming up next week and, or the weeks after that, make sure you sign up for my newsletter, which is on my website right above me, but go to the newsletter section. Also, be sure to tune into iTunes, uh, be a subscriber so that you can get them automatically, all of these, uh, these episodes automatically downloaded to your, your iPhone. And uh, just look it up by Mary Giuliani Live. And... Um, the other thing I want to uh, go over is my coaching tip. And since Liz's whole message has been about um, really supporting people and getting more tuned in to being active and, and really, you know, moving their bodies and their lives, I wanted to share a little bit about how I can support you guys in doing that. You know, as a coach, one of the things I do when I first start working with a client is I help help them look at what the major, there's four fundamentals you've got to really have as, a, as, as your foundation in your life. You've got to have healthy food, adequate sleep, meditation or mindfulness, 
and moving your body. And so, you know, it's, it's what I want to support you guys in is looking at, okay, so what are you doing now to move your body? If you're not, what is one thing that you can do to start actually moving? You know, if you haven't been moving at all, you can start by just walking for 10 minutes or even, you know, depending on how big you are, how small you are, whatever. Again, like Liz talked about, listen to your body, but it's amazing how the body can really um, uh, increase endurance just by putting, putting, putting your, yourself out there in the game. One of the things I want to mention that has really helped me is my Fitbit. <laughs> this is something I got several years ago, and the reason it's been so powerful, it's actually helped me in a couple of ways. It's helped me get honest. It keeps me honest about how much activity I've done, and it helps me track it in, in, on my cell phone, and uh, you can set goals in it, and you can also, there's a social media component to it, so you can actually support people, uh, your friends, and find out how much, you know, exercise they're doing, and, and it's, it's a really amazing uh, little gadget and um, so this has been really key for me also it helps me track my sleep so I actually put this right on my pajama top and it can tell whether I'm moving or not at night and I can because you know for me with my sleep I, I really you don't know how many times you wake up in the middle of the night you really don't know and and you wonder you know am I really getting eight hours of sleep or seven hours or whatever it is so anyway so what I want you guys to do is make a commitment to either start exercising just a measurable amount like I said what what just choose something and start just start and again it doesn't have to be painful it doesn't have to be over the top um, I like I said I walk 30 minutes a day but when I first started walking I just walked 10 minutes and then Put something in place to track yourself so that you actually do it. And like I was talking to Liz about, I actually listen to podcasts and talk to my friends on the phone. And so you can do this and not even realize you're exercising. So that's my coaching tip for the day. Um, the next thing I want to mention is that I am a life coach. And uh, the main focus that I work with in terms of coaching is really um, basically about helping women that really have a burning desire to live their highest calling but are feeling stuck or stopped in terms of just the clarity of what that message is or how to get that message out there to really reach millions of people and how they can really make the difference they want to make. And so if you're a woman, typically I work with women in their mid-50s that are, are just like, oh my God, you know, time is closing in on me and I want to really live my calling and do the kind of work that I know that makes a really profound difference in people's lives, but I'm feeling stuck. I am your coach. Uh, I am living 100% true to my values in, in, in what I do with this show, as well as working with my coaching clients. And I have a 25 year background in marketing as well as business. And also I can teach you how to uh, launch your own live stream show too. So um, if you're interested in any kind of coaching support, go to my website in the coaching section. Um, and then next week we have Jane Ellen Davis. Jane is the author of um, a great book called Unlock Your Heart, Goal Setting from the Inside Out. And it's going to be a great episode because it's really going to help you get in touch with what your core values are, what, what you really truly love, not necessarily what you've maybe been taught to love. And then how to align your goals and, and, and uh, your, your focus and your vision with with what your heart is telling you to do. So um, be sure to join us next week. And let's see, is there anything else? Well, of course, my last thing. Tomorrow, I want to encourage you and challenge you to do one thing that you haven't done to be true to yourself, and you will be amazed at what happens. And so um, with that, we're going to go ahead and, and sign off for the night and um, make it a great week, and we'll talk to you all later. Thank you.